السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله Verily all praises are due to Allah. We seek his help and we seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from our evil deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides can never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah, Allah allows to stray can never be guided. I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah the One, having no partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتق الله حق تكاتي ولا ولا تموتنا إلا وأنت مسلمون. Oh, you who believe, have taqwa of Allah as you should have taqwa of Allah and die not except in a state of Islam. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, ittaka Allah wa kula kulan sadeeda, yuslih lakum a'amalukum, wa yakfir lakum dhunubukum, wa man yati ala wa rasoolu fakat faza fawzan azeema. Oh, you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and speak a straightforward word. Speak a straightforward word. And he will forgive your sins and repair your deeds. And whoever takes Allah and his messenger as a guide has already achieved the mightiest achievement. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to talk today about a weapon. Yeah, in the home office, we're going to talk about weapons. Weapons of mass destruction. Allah has given every one of us a weapon. A weapon of mass destruction. Something which is so destructive. And yet we're not even aware of it. And we house that weapon in our mouths. Your tongue and my tongue and every human being's tongue is a weapon of mass destruction. The tongue is so destructive, the tongue can destroy all of our good deeds. The tongue can destroy communities. The tongue can destroy marriages. The tongue destroys, I'm saying could destroy, it does destroy all these things. It destroys brotherhood, it destroys families, it destroys relationships, it destroys people's reputations, it destroys people's honour, it destroys people's dignity, it destroys everything you can think of can be destroyed with your tongue. How often are we aware of how destructing, destructive our tongue can really be? But above all of that... The biggest thing our tongues can destroy is us. Because last week we talked about what we will face on Yom Al-Qiyamah. 
what we will face on Yawm al Qiyamah, what our questioning will be like. And the one thing that God forbid, if we've let it run loose, that will destroy us above anything else, alongside one other thing which we'll come to, is our tongues. So let's look today at what our tongues can do, and what they should do, and what they shouldn't do. Allah mentions in Surah Al-Infitar, roughly translated, Verily, but verily over you are appointed angels to watch over you. Kind and honourable, writing down your deeds. They know all that you do. Another ayah, Surah Al-Qa'ah. Not a word does he or she say, but there is a watcher by him ready to record it. And his companion will say, here is the record with me. Two ayat. Everything we do, everything we say is being recorded. Are we confident? Go back to last week when we said about facing Allah on the day of judgment. Are we confident with what comes from our tongues? Are we confident? You know what? My tongue is clean. I've got nothing to worry about. Anybody in this room feel confident and say, my tongue is clean? No one. No one is confident there because we know our tongues are uttering filth, depravity, backbiting, slander, all manner of things on a regular basis. So this weapon in our mouths really is a weapon of mass destruction. Every Friday, what do we hear at the beginning of the khutbah? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, ittakallaha wa kulu qawlan sadeeda. Oh, you have believed, oh, you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and speak a straightforward word. Straightforward word. So Allah is saying, every, we're reminded by the Prophet, he used this ayah every Friday to remind us what? Have taqwa and what? Speak a straightforward word. Have taqwa and speak a straightforward word. Have taqwa, speak a straightforward word. Every Friday we get this reminder. And what happens? And I point at myself before anybody else in this room. We leave the room and we haven't even got to our fish and chips. And filth is uttered from our mouths. What do our tongues do? Are we in control of this weapon of mass destruction? If we become understanding that we have to be mindful of what comes from our tongues, we have to be mindful of what this will do to us in the day of judgment, then suddenly we find ourselves almost fearful to open it. Opening that mouth should cause us fear because if something comes out which is displeasing to Allah, as we will see, it might one word, you'll, I'll, I'll narrate the hadith to you in a moment. One word might end us up in the hellfire. Are we being careful what we do with our tongues? In Sahih Muslim, Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, listen very carefully to this. He who believes in Allah in the last day, stop. He who believes in Allah in the last day. Inshallah, all of us believe in Allah in the last day, right? So this applies to every one of us. He who believes in Allah in the last day must either speak good or remain silent. Where are we? Bit of self-evaluation. Bit of making sure we're, we, we're, we're checking our uh, checks and balances on where we are. Where are we? Just on the hadith. We haven't even gone into any detail yet. Just on this hadith. He who believes in Allah in the last day, that's us, inshallah, must, not should, must, Speak good or remain silent? Where are we? Ask yourself right now, where am I? Don't show it on your face, don't say anything, but just evaluate. Where am I with speaking good or remaining silent? It's so easy for us to open our mouths and let whatever is there come out. We, we often will open our mouths and think later. We'll talk about that in a moment too. We don't think about what we're saying. We don't think about the implications of the words that we are using. We use our mouths, our tongues to say bad things, to lie, to slander, to, to, uh, to backbite, to do all of these things. We use our tongues sometimes to undo so much good that we've done. So many people will have wonderful traits. But this weapon of mass destruction, the tongue, is what is undoing and unraveling all of the deeds that may be, being, uh, may be being done in our records. How many times in your life, in my life, have you opened your mouth, your tongue has said something, and afterwards you're like, oh, I wish I hadn't said that. How many times? 
For some people, every day. Every day we say something, we're like, oh, I wish I could take that back. Oh, I didn't know it was going to have that impact. Oh, no. Every day sometimes we will utter things that we wish we couldn't, that we, we could take back. But you can't. This is why controlling this tongue is so, so important. Because you can't take it back. Years later, your tongue might have said something, which decades later is still having an impact. Are we in control of the tongue? Let me give you a couple of examples. Look at the people I'm going to give you examples from. Ibn Abbas. Big name to start with. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, was once stood holding the tip of his tongue and he was saying, again, who's saying it? Not, this is not me and you talking. Oh, Asim and Kamran were talking. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, was holding the tip of his tongue and saying, Woe to you, curse to you, say what is good and you will reap gain, and be silent from what is evil and you will be safe. A man passing by said, Oh, Ibn Abbas, what is the matter with you? You're holding the tip of your tongue and you're saying such and such a thing. Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, replied, it has reached me from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that the servant of Allah will not be as angry as, with anything as he is with his tongue on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. The servant on the day of judgment, the slave of Allah, will not be as angry with anything as his tongue. Why? Because we say what we want. We let any filth, depravity, lie, whatever thought is in our head comes out. Who? I said at the beginning of that narration, who's saying this? Ibn Abbas. How many books of Sirah have you read when it says Ibn Abbas was swearing, Ibn Abbas was lying, Ibn Abbas was telling backbiting or slander or saying any kind of rubbish? None! And yet Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu is holding his tongue and cursing it. Why? Because he knows on the day of judgment even he, radiallahu anhu, will be angry with his tongue. Before I bring the analogy back to you and I, let's go with another in individual. So here's one level, Ibn Abbas, great sahaba. Let's move up a notch. Umar ibn Khattab comes across Abu Bakr al-Sadiq, radiallahu anhuma. We've moved up a level, you'd all agree. We've gone from Ibn Abbas and now we're into the Khulf al-Rashidin. Two of the Ashrat al-Mubashra. And what do we find? We hear Abu Bakr al-Siddiq coming across Abu uh, Umar al Khattab coming across Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. I found him pulling his tongue. Abu Bakr is holding his tongue and pulling it. He says, "Oh Abu Bakr, what are you doing?" Abu Bakr is angry and he replies, "It is this that has brought me so much trouble." Pulling his tongue. It is this that has brought me so much trouble. What did Abu Bakr as Siddiq? His name is as Siddiq. What did as Siddiq do with his tongue that he's so worried about the trouble? Al Hassan al Basri, let's take it down a level again. Al Hassan al Basri says the intelligent person's tongue is behind his heart. When he wants to speak, he first thinks. If his words will be in his favor, then he says them. If they will be against them, he doesn't speak. But the ignorant person, the jahil, his, tongue, his heart is behind his tongue. When he merely thinks, he speaks. Whether it is in favour or against him. Now bring it back to you and me. First question. Ibn Abbas and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq are holding their tongues and they're angry. Because they're fearful about what their tongues might say. What did their tongues say? Where are we? What do our tongues say? Then you come to what the statement of Al Hassan al Basri. Where is our tongue? Is our tongue behind the heart or in front of the heart? If it's behind the heart and we will not open our mouths and allow that weapon of mass destruction to begin its, 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 its destruction until we've checked it, checks and balances the heart. He didn't say the head. He didn't say put it behind your brain. Put it behind your heart. Why your heart? Your heart is connected to Allah. Your heart will be the thing that will say, is saying this going to benefit me in the Akhirah or is keeping quiet? Go back to our first hadith. What's the first hadith we mentioned today? We said, Rasulullah said, he who believes in Allah in the last day must speak good or remain silent. Must. It's a command. You believe in Allah in the last day? Speak good or shut up. That's what it means. Speak good or shut it. 
is the us. Where is our tongue? Behind the heart or in front of the heart? Is the heart checking? Is it good? Okay, if it's good, and I, I, wallahi al I point the finger at me before any of you because I can't stop talking. And I know that this is a problem we collectively have, but again, I point the finger at myself before anyone. Where is my heart? Where is my tongue? Is the tongue behind the heart that there is a check and a balance there? Before I say something, I'm going to check. Is it pleasing to Allah? Is it going to benefit me? When the angel is describing, is he going to be, is the angel that going, ooh, ooh, like you go to a car garage and you're like, ooh. Are our angels going, oh, ooh, ooh. Is that what they're doing? Is they writing our scribes? Because of what we're saying? Or are they writing very nicely on the right side? Dhikr of Allah, pleasure to Allah, da'wah to Allah, harshness on the other side, profanity, backbiting, ill feeling on one side, or kindness, mercy, rahmah on the other side. Look at ourselves and ask ourselves, analyze, where is my tongue? Is it behind my heart because I check it before I speak, or is it in front of my heart? Because what happens is, whatever comes into my head, not my heart, whatever comes into my head, it's not being checked by the heart. So I just open my mouth and I say it. Nothing to hold it back. Where is this weapon of mass destruction? A Tirbindi related that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was asked, who are the people who will be admitted to paradise the most? The most people who will be admitted to paradise. A natural question. Sahaba want to know, we want to go to paradise. What are the people who are going to be most entered into paradise? I want to be in that category. Hedging your bets. If he's going to say they're the people who fast most, I'm going to fast most because I want to be amongst the people who are most likely to enter paradise. So he is asked, who are the people who are most entering paradise? He says, taqwa of Allah and good character. So now they're asking, if we, if we have taqwa of Allah and good character, then we're going to enter Jannah, inshallah. Then they ask, because they equally had fear of Jahannam, when, they were, uh, when the Sahaba asked him, who are the people who will enter the fire the most? So Jannah, that's where we want to go. Who are these people? People of taqwa of Allah and good character. Who are the people who are going to go most to Jahannam? He said, the people who are admitted into the fire the most are because of their mouth and their private parts. This tongue, this weapon of mass destruction. And of course the private parts. Look around society today. Those two things are out of control. The thing, and again, Rasulullah mentioned the hadith which I'll mention to you in a moment. Those two things are out of control. The tongues and the private parts. Completely out of control. Words come flowing. No thought. No worry about the implications. Just come flowing. And equally, the private carts come flowing because no one's got any control about what they're doing down there. Think about where we are. Analyze yourself. Ask about the weapon of mass destruction. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, was salatu was salamu ala ashraf al mursaleen, Khatum al anbiya wa rahmatulillah nameen, Sayyidna wa habibana wa shafi'ana wa maulana Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, Amma bad. So we need to guard this tongue. We need to take hold of this weapon of mass destruction. Keep thinking about those two examples who literally get hold of their tongues, Ibn Abbas and Abu Bakr, and how angry they were with their tongues, when nothing that I could imagine of the, th the state that comes from our tongues would have come from them. We need to make sure we are holding on very tight. I mentioned in the first khutbah about hellfire on the end of a word. Imam Bukhari radiallahu anh, has re uh, related that the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, a slave of Allah may utter a word carelessly, which displeases Allah without thinking of its gravity. And because of it, he's thrown into hellfire. 
Now, careless mean doesn't always just a flippant word. Careless means not thinking about it. Where's the heart? Where's the checks and balances? One word. One word could be so displeasing to Allah that it plummets you to the hell. One word. Good news. In another narration, I haven't brought it to you today, in another narration, Rasulullah says, roughly translated, that a word may be so pleasing to Allah that it elevates you 70 layers in Jannah. On the one hand, you might say a word so pleasing to Allah. On the other hand, a word so displeasing to Allah, it plummets you through the hellfire. Allah says, okay, we've seen the hadith. Allah says in Surah Hujarat, roughly translated, and do not backbite one another. Would one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? You would hate so be eating the flesh of his dead brother. Uh, so fear Allah. Verily, Allah is the one who forgives and accepts repentance and most merciful. Backbiting is normal, brothers and sisters, nowadays. Can we have a conversation without some backbite? We all do it. Don't think any of us is exempt. We all do it. We can't help it. That's the society we now live in, is that the only pleasure is about backbiting. You have backbiting publications. What is hello and now and blah blah and this and to take a break and all these things. That, what are they? They're magazines of backbiting. Oh, so and so. So and so was seen out with so and so and didn't they look so fine and he looked this and she said that and... What's this? Ghiba. All of it is ghiba. Backbiting, eating the flesh of your dead brother. Eating the flesh. Why? Because we're so interested in other people's lives. Bukhari and Muslim both related that Abu Musa al Ashari said Rasulullah was once asked, some people asked Allah's Messenger whose Islam is the best? Look at the things the Sahaba used to ask. Whose Islam is the best? How do I get to Jannah? How do I avoid hellfire? This is what concerns them. Not how much money can I make? What's this? What's that? That's all that concerns them is how can I improve? Whose Islam is the best? Rasulullah replied, the one who avoids harming Muslims with his tongue and his hands. MashaAllah, tabarakallah, we on the whole tend to avoid, on the whole, harming Muslims with our hands. Very rarely do we go around slapping people or punching them and this type of thing. Inshallah. Is the same true of our tongues? Do we avoid harming people with our tongues? Yes? No? Only we can answer that for ourselves. But we're asking the question, whose Islam is the best? If we want to have the best Islam, we have to avoid harming people with our hands and our tongues. Abu ibn As, radiallahu anhu said, Words are like medicine. Little is enough and too much destroys you. SubhanAllah, look at the profound nature of these statements. Words are like medicine. Of course, we need medicine. We need words. You want to take medicine. You have a headache. You take paracetamol. It helps the headache. ta'ala. But you take 70 paracetamol. What will it do? Kill you. Or is it 48, however many it takes to commit suicide? It'll kill you. Words are like medicine. Little is enough. Too much will cause you harm. SubhanAllah. Profound, profound statement. Abu Sayyid al-Khudri radiallahu anhu said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, when the son of Adam gets up in the morning, all the, this is amazing. SubhanAllah. Every time I come across this hadith, I think this is absolutely amazing. Think very long and hard about this hadith. When the son of Adam gets up in the morning, that's you and I, every morning we get up. What happens when we get up? All the limbs, every one of your faculties humble themselves. You don't see it, of course. Don't start thinking, I never see my feet or my hands humbling themselves. It means how, in the sight of Allah, what these limbs, what these faculties, because they have thoughts and feelings which will answer against us on the day of judgment. What will they do? They humble themselves before the tongue. Your hands, your feet, your eyes, your ears, your smell, your body will all do what? Humble itself before your tongue every morning. Why? They humble themselves before the tongue and say, Fear Allah for our sake because we are with you. Fear Allah for our sake because we are with you. If you are straight, we will be straight. 
But if you're crooked, we will be crooked. Our own faculties are pleading with our tongues every morning. Pleading. For crying out loud, be straight. Say, say a word directed to the right. Be true. Be upon Salat al Mustaqim. Because if you start going crooked, we'll go crooked. Our own limbs are pleading with our tongues to make sure they stay on the straight path. Ask ourselves. We started the khutbah with a question. How many of us are ready to face Allah with what the tongues have had recorded on our records? How many? I put, put it to you and I. None of us. None of us are ready to face Allah with just forget what our hands have done. Forget what our eyes have done. Just what our tongues have done will probably plummet us to hellfire. So we make tawbah for what has gone before. And we make a decision right now today that we're going to hold those tongues. If we have to physically hold them like Ibn Abbas and Abu Bakr and chastise our tongues, so be it. If it reminds us to be mindful of what our tongues do, they are weapons of mass destruction. Societies can be destroyed on the words of one individual. Marriages failed, relationships gone, misunderstanding upon misunderstanding upon misunderstanding, which is why Rasulullah says, He who fears Allah and the last day, speak good or remain silent. We have to think long and hard about that hadith. Speak good or remain silent. How difficult is it for us, me before any of you, to remain silent? We ask Allah to give us tawfiq to control this weapon of mass destruction that he placed in our mouths. We ask Allah for tawfiq to speak good words only that are directed to the right as we are commanded and reminded in the Quran every Friday to do. We ask Allah to forgive us for all those words that have gone before us which were harming, which are damaging, which were displeasing to Allah and we ask them to be replaced on our good records with our tawbah and by al afur that he pardons us and gives us those as good deeds instead. We ask Allah to give us tawfiq from this moment onwards that our tongues will only speak good and, or remain silent. We ask Allah to increase us in Iman. We ask Allah to increase us in Ihsan. We ask Allah to increase us in Taqwa. We ask Allah to forgive us for all of our sins. The big of them, the small of them. The open of them, the hidden of them. The past of them, the present of them, and the future of them. We ask Allah to alleviate our suffering. And the suffering of our brothers and sisters, wherever they are and whatever situation they may be in. We ask Allah to make every single one of us shining ambassadors and examples of the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasnatam wa fil akhirati hasnatam wa kina adab al-nar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama salaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim inna kafim bin Majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta. على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يعمر بالأدل واللسان وتائد القربة وينهى إن الفشاء والمنكر والبغي يأذكم لألكم تذكرون surely Allah commands justice, good deeds and generosity to relatives and He forbids all shameful deeds, injustice and rebellion. He instructs you so that you may be reminded. فذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون and remember me, and I will remember you. Be grateful to me, and do not reject faith. Wallah dhikr Allahi Akbar. Wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'oon. And without doubt, remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing in life. And Allah knows the deeds that you do. Akeem al-salat. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu wa la ilaha illallah. Ashadu wa na Muhammad Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falaq. Adakam tis salah, adakam tis salah.